By the time the sun had set and it was almost 4 a.m., Vanatha was going on a palak on the Kudan the Tiravara road. Her heart was confused. Her mind was racing that she should go to Sudamani Viharam at Nagaipatanam and attend to the prince who was lying there with fever. But how is that possible? When he thought about whether he would be allowed into the Buddhist monk's Vihara, whether he could see the prince there, and whether he could do the work even if he saw him, there was only one mountain stream. At the thought of having to travel alone to Nagaipatanam, I felt nervous. She tried to clear her mind and calm down. What great thing in the world is easily possible? How hard is it for everyone to achieve what they set out to do? How brave must that woman be to row a boat alone in the sea? How brave must she have been to save the prince by leaving the boat in the midst of the mountain-like waves in the storm and rain? How foolish is it to be afraid of this little journey? There is no harm in not being able to go into Sudamani Viharat immediately. It is enough to know the news about the prince from the neighborhood. No harm in not being able to see the prince, if only we could see that running girl. Yes, that's right, if you somehow get to know her, you might even be able to see the prince through her. His love for him should show some benefit. After that you can leave this life. Or join the Buddhist Sangha and become a Bhikshanai. Vanatha pulled back the palanquin's curtain and looked outside to inquire of the tooth-bearers what time they would be able to reach Nagaipatnam the next day. It seemed to her that some figures were hiding behind the overgrown trees on the side of the road. She stared a little more carefully. It turned out that those who were hiding were Vera Siva Kalamukas. Vanati was not worried at all about this. When she was growing up in Kajumbalar Palace, Kalamuks used to visit there. Talk to her grandfather and get the things they need. The great guru of the Kalamugars once came to Kajumbalar. All services and pujas were done for him. Her great father Buddhavikramakesari has established shrines in many temples to create swans for the Kalamukas. Therefore Kalamukas will not harm him. Maybe they will help. Vanati also knew that their Maha Sangam was meeting today. So that day when she came to Kudana from Palayare, she happened to see Kalamukar gatherings on the road. But why are they hiding behind the tree? Do they think that they might be someone else and do some harm? Why are they hiding behind the tree? Do they think that they might be someone else and do some harm? Why are they hiding behind the tree? Do they think that they might be someone else and do some harm? While she was thinking like this, the people who were hiding suddenly came running. They surrounded the palanquin. Even then she was not afraid. She wanted to tell them who she was. Before she could think of how to say it, she saw the maid who had accompanied the palanquin being caught by two men and tied to a tree. Suddenly a scream of panic came out of her mouth. One of the Kalamukas surrounding the palanquin took a trident and pointed it at her face and said, Girl, don't shout. If you don't shout, we won't do anything to you. Otherwise we will stab you with this trident. Vanatha got some courage and thought to speak majestically, she said, Do you know who I am? Daughter of Kajumbalar Velar, if you touch me you will perish. She had courage in her heart, but her voice trembled when she spoke. On hearing that, Kalamugan said, We know everything. We have been waiting for you for a while. Otherwise. He again took the trident and stretched it out. At the same time, the sound of whipping Sular Sular and the voice of Ao was heard. Vanatha knew that those who screamed after being hit like that were saviors. They must have been whipped by some Kalamugars. Vanatha got angry about that and wanted to get down from the palanquin. It didn't stand a chance. Because Sivaka threw up the palanquin and started running. The Kalamuks also came running to surround the palanquin. As they ran they screamed terribly. So Vanati realized that it was useless to shout. Jumping down from a moving palanquin is also impossible. Even if he jumps like that, he should jump among these terrible people. Where are they taking themselves? After running for about half an hour they stopped near an old turkey temple from the cover of trees. By this time it was getting dark. A man went into the temple and took the lamp that was burning there and pointed it in front of Vanati's face. One of the Kalamugars looked at Vanati and said, Girl. 
tell us the details we ask. We will leave you alone. Or we will take you wherever you want to go and keep you safe. A never before seen doubt arose in Venati's mind. What detail do I know? What are you going to ask me? She said. Woman. Did you not set out on this journey alone to meet someone in private? Who is he? Whom did you set out to meet? Venati's suspicions were confirmed. In a moment there was a great change in her heart. The woman who used to get scared even at the slightest sound turned into a lioness who was not afraid of anything in the world. What is it to you if I set out to meet whom? Who are you to ask about it? Can't tell. Vanatha said. Kalamugan smiled. He said, don't say that, we know it. You only set out to meet Prince Aromas Hivarman. Tell us where he is hiding. We will leave you alone. Do whatever you want. You can't get any details from me, said Vanathi emphatically. Are you saying you can do whatever you want? You wouldn't dare say that if you knew what we were going to do. What are you going to do? Say that too. First we will light one of your beautiful flower-like hands in this candle flame. Then we will light the other hand. Then, we will shine the candle in your black hair. Do well. Here is my hand. Bring the torch nearer. Vanatha said. Vanati knew all the intrigues and conspiracies going on in the kingdom. These scoundrels must be men of conspirators. They try to find the prince's whereabouts. It must be with the intention of harming him. If I have to suffer such horrors for the sake of the prince, for his protection, what greater privilege is there? Thus thought Vanathi, the princess of Kajambalur. That thought gave her such courage. Woman! Think it over. Don't be stubborn. You'll regret it later. You'll be an invisible groupie for the rest of your life. Kalamugan said. Burn me to pieces, cut my flesh to pieces. Yet you will not know a single detail of me. She said. Then we must see to our business. Cheetah. Bring that torch here. Kalamugan said. At that moment, Vanati's attention wandered away. She saw a long procession of elephants, horses, infantry, palanquins etc. approaching their place. She thought that some unexpected help was coming to her by the grace of the deity. Beware! Look there! She pointed out. Kalamugan laughed again. Do you know who's coming? He asked. The Prime Minister is like Anrid Ha. If I shout now, they will hear. Beware! Leave me and run away. Otherwise! Said Vanathi. Kalamugan said, Yes, lady. The one who comes is the first minister in love, Anuradha. It is on his orders that we have brought you. Now terror gripped Vanati again. Unbeknownst to her, a scream of panic came from her throat. She tried to cover her mouth to suppress this.